So let's talk about some DHCP high availability options. Now before we do, let's talk about why this can sometimes be important. Now, rebuilding a DHCP server is not a big deal. DHCP doesn't take a lot of time to build con or con configure. It doesn't take a lot of system resources to it, so it doesn't have to run on your newest, most powerful server. But it is one of those things that is necessary for your network to, oper uh, to operate correctly. And because it's something that kind of runs in the background and we just forget about it, if the DHCP server ever fails, normally the first idea we have that it's failed is when a client computer goes to renew an address, can't, and it stops working. And then all of a sudden we're getting complaints saying, hey, I can't get on the network. I'm getting an error. What's going on here? And we start digging into it and we start troubleshooting and we discover that our DHCP server is down. So to prevent that from happening, we have a couple of high availability options. Now, one of them, and we're not going to go through this one, one of them is to do a cluster uh, configuration where we install cluster servers and then we do clustered servers with DHCP running across a cluster. And that's using a different technology in uh, Windows. And it's great and it works. Um, it's a little more complex to set up. There's actually a couple of options we have built into DHCP which simplifies this process for us. So let's go ahead and talk about how this works. Now I've created another DHCP server on my network that I will be using to illustrate how this works. So we're going to look at two options, doing split scope and failover. So I'm going to right click on my scope and go to advanced and split scope. Now the idea behind split scope is that I use a couple of different servers and I split my scope between those two servers. <clears throat> and then if the primary server isn't responding, the secondary server will respond and so on and so forth. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to click Next and I'm going to put in my additional DHCP server. And because it's not part of my actual domain, I'm just going to give it the IP address. Whoops. 12, not 10. 10 is me. And we'll go out and try to contact that and that'll take a second because it's got to contact the server and it's got to verify that it's got DHCP on it. And remember, it's not part of my network, so this will actually take it a little bit longer. But it, we're not part of my domain. But it will figure it out here in a minute. So we give it the uh, additional uh, secondary DHCP server. Once it verifies that, we're going to have to wait a second while it verifies here. It says not responding. If that happens, don't panic. It's still working. It's just talking to the other server in the background. There we go. We come up with our split scope wizard. Now, the way split scope is kind of designed to work <clears throat> is we'll have a... Right here, we have our range of addresses. And remember, I created my range from 100 to 200. So by default, my host to DHCP server, the one I'm doing this from, will have 80% of the addresses. The secondary one, the added DHCP server, will have 20% of the addresses. And so you can see here my starting address and my ending address. So this one's starting at um, 100 going through 180. And we're excluding from this one 100 through 200. And from this one, we're excluding 100 through 179. So what that means is that by splitting that scope, the servers won't accidentally hand out the same address. Now, this is based on an 80-20 split. I can adjust this using the slider here. Or I can adjust it by putting in numbers here. Or I can adjust it down here. So I'm going to go back to my 80-20 split. And we'll just use the default options here. So because host 1 has 80% of the addresses, I'm going to want host 1 to hand out addresses first. Host 2, the secondary, the added DHCP server, I don't want this one to hand out addresses unless this one's not responding. So that's what we have over here, a, D a uh, delay. So. What will happen is the clients will send out a DHCP request, a DHCP discover message to both servers. It's a broadcast. It'll hit both servers. So the servers will respond and 
By default, though, both respond immediately. And then whichever one, ha whichever response happens to get back to the client first, that's the one it's going to go with. So to make sure that my host DHCP always responds first, then I'm going to put in, let's do a 50 millisecond delay. And so now, once that request, that DHCP Discover broadcast hits both servers, the host one, our primary one, will respond immediately. The added DHCP server will respond 50 milliseconds later. The idea being that the client then receives the response from the host DHCP server, releases an address from it. But if for some reason the host DHCP server is down, then 50 milliseconds later they'll get a reply from the DHCP server, the added DHCP server, and they will take that one. So click next, and this brings us to our last step. This is just kind of confirmation. So here's my host one, here's my added DHCP server, and the scope name the subnet delay, and then the exclusion range. So both of them are going to have the same scope. We'll, we're just doing exclusions. And remember I said earlier in one of the other videos that if you're manually putting in exclusions, it's because you probably didn't plan well. Well, here we'll use that exclusion range in order to make these split scopes actually work. So this one will exclude the last 20 addresses. This one will exclude the first 80. If I'm happy with it, I just click Finish, and I'm done. I now have a split scope across both servers. The, this server will always respond first. The second one will respond only if the first one goes down. So now what I can do is I can go into that second server every so often and just check. And if it's leasing addresses, it's probably because something is wrong with my primary DHCP server. But if my primary DHCP server goes down, I now have a secondary DHCP server that can keep things up and running for a while. I'm going to cancel that. And we're going to take a look at our other option. And that is to go to Configure Failover. So I'll click on configure fail over here. The what scopes do we want to uh, do it for? And we only have one, so you know that makes it easy. We're going to set our partner server 192.168.5.12. Same thing. Click next. And then here we're going to have a couple of more things. So we have a relationship name, we have a maximum client lead time, and a mode. So this will operate in a couple of different ways. We can do a load balance or we can do a hot standby. Now in a hot standby, the partner server becomes a standby server. So it doesn't activate, it doesn't start leasing addresses unless the primary server is offline. And you'll see here we have 5% of our addresses are reserved for the standby server. This is very similar to that uh, split scope will function very similar to that split scope configuration we just did. Now, the other option is a load balance. And in load balance, the idea is both servers will respond to all requests and we'll divide out by default, it's 50 50 split. The local server and the partner server will each take half the addresses. They'll respond to everybody simultaneously and one DHCP server isn't carrying the entire load. This is similar to doing a 50-50 uh, split scope with no delays. Now, because there's a failover relationship happening here, we do need a shared secret between the two. I'm just going to put in a really cheesy shared secret. And that's it. Click Finish, and we now have load balancing happening for our DHCP scope. Now, notice both of these things we have done on a per scope basis. This one gave us the option when we first set it up here. If we had more than one scope, we could do it for all of our available scopes. We just go down and select the ones that we wanted. The split scope is definitely we have to do it on a scope by scope basis. So for each DHCP scope, we have to do our own split scope configuration. All right, so that gives you a couple of ways that you can set up a failover for your Microsoft DHCP server.